Fully, Honourable Member Julianne Genta. Tanakwe, Ms Genta. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I love New Zealand. That is why I became a Member of Parliament for the Green Party, because I want to look after New Zealand and make it an even better place to live, not just in the short term, but in the long term. I worked as a transportation planner before I got involved in politics. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that the most successful cities all over the world are doing well because they have taken a new approach to transport, one that prioritizes people and goods rather than just focusing on more vehicles, which are very costly. Unfortunately, John Key and this national government are taking New Zealand backwards, particularly when it comes to transport. It's like they are completely unaware of everything that's been going on in the rest of the world for the past 20 years. So I had to get involved in politics. I had to stand up because I could see that it was politicians who knew nothing about transport, like the ones who are in charge right now, who were making the big decisions about where the money goes. And where is the money going? National is spending huge sums of money on just a few motorway projects that do nothing to reduce congestion or to reduce the cost of getting goods and people around our towns and cities or indeed around the country. In fact, they're even going to be taking on debt to pay for some of these projects. So we had the Transmission Gully Public-Private Partnership announced today. And essentially, a public-private partnership is a more expensive way of borrowing. The Crown is borrowing from the private sector, and future taxpayers are going to be paying back for this road $125 million every year for a quarter of a century. Just to put that in context, $125 million a year for one stretch of motorway. In the government policy statement on transport funding, they've only allocated $70 to $80 million a year for regional transport improvements around the entire country. So we'll be paying for 25 years for this one project that has very low benefits. Recently, National announced that they'd be using some of the future investment fund to pay for regional roads. And of course, it's come out that there was no proper economic analysis of those projects before they picked them. So we have a government who's selling off productive assets to pay for projects that can buy them votes in some regions, but aren't even the best use of money for building a stronger economy and one that's actually going to deliver in the long term. But there is an alternative to this. And the Green Party, in fact, has the most sensible, costed, financially responsible pro program for transport. What would we do? The Green Party actually does think that roads are an essential, essential part of our transport system. And we want to look after our existing roads, maintain them better, make them safer, and make them work better. And how do you make roads work better? The best way to do that is to give more commuters the opportunity to take a fast, frequent bus or train to work. We can make it easier and more affordable for people to use public transport, and then there'll be less cars congesting our roads, freeing it up for the essential freight and other vehicles that need to use them. We can make it safer for kids to walk and cycle to school, a Kiwi birthright. Everybody knows that there's no congestion, practically, during school holidays. And simply by making it safer for our kids to walk and cycle to school, we can remo remove huge numbers of cars from the roads at peak time at very low cost. But it's not just low cost. It's better for our kids and for our environment. They arrive at school fresh, invigorated, ready to learn. And there's research from Denmark which shows that kids who walk and cycle to school are actually half a year advanced on their counterparts. I know that New Zealanders love their towns and cities. They want to be able to let their kids walk and cycle to school. And it's not going to cost them more money. It's not impractical. All we need to do is reprioritize the transport budget and put people first. It's actually basic common sense. But in order to do this, I have to tell the people of New Zealand, you cannot vote for the National Party. If they get one more term in government, they are going to put us into even more debt for transport projects, which are actually going to aggravate congestion and do nothing to help most commuters. So, Mr. Speaker, to get a smart green transport system that is going to enable us to have towns and cities that people love to live in and that work well, party vote green. 
I call the Honourable Member Maggie Barry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It is with great pleasure that I rise to take one of the final calls on the budget debate at the third reading of the Appropriation Bill Impress Supply Bill. Now, I could be tempted to be derailed, uh, no pun intended.